Hello everyone and welcome to my nerdy little corner of the internet. This is Halloween, this is Halloween, 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 Halloween. It's the spooky season, and if you were here last year, I discussed my worst fears for Disney Lorcana. I will be doing a quick review of my fears last year, see if they were confirmed, and then set up new fears for the coming year for Disney Lorcana. My first fear is that the gameplay just isn't good. Whether the resource system doesn't quite work out, or they don't have a variety of playstyles that can be played. Thankfully, this concern went out the window very quickly. Disney Lorcana is an incredibly fun game to play with plenty of interaction and strategy, but at the same time, is accessible to so many younger players and to those brand new to the TCG culture. My second fear is that they started the hype train far too soon. We are still at least eight months away from being able to play these cards at our local gaming store. There were a good number of people who were very excited the entire year about Disney Lorcana. Unfortunately, a good number of people also decided to step away until the set actually came out. Ravensburger did their best keeping the hype train going for the full year from D23 to the release of the first chapter, but looking back, it was really the community as a whole, the content creators, and just wonderful people of the community that really kept the game hype going. My third fear is that they are wildly underprepared and have underprinted th this first set. Well, this concern definitely happened. There is a severe lack of product for the first chapter, at least here in the United States. With the combination of incredible demand and incredible scalping, a large number of people who would be interested in the game aren't able to actually play it. Now, there are a few ways to get cheap decks, and my friend at the Illumineers did a great job collecting starter deck lists and getting them to those that wanted starters, but yeah, the first chapter was severely undersupplied, and we're supposed to get new waves but we don't know how big these ways are and how much they're going to actually affect the market. My fourth and final fear, and this is kind of a selfish fear, but what it is is that Lorcana is going to leave their content creators on their own. This one's been kind of developing for a while. There have been moments of Ravensburger communicating with content creators to make great reveals. A large number of content creators were able to reveal cards in the first chapter, and I was their first interaction when I got to reveal the ink limitations back around Christmas. There have also been large amount of reveals in Lorcana HU Discord, but this isn't necessarily what we meant. But hey, beggars can't be choosers too much. Now, last year's fears have been confirmed or denied. Let's set up some new ones, though they may be a little bit similar to last year's. Fear number one. The game will die due to the extreme lack of product. Where is it? This is unlikely to happen, but it wouldn't be the first time a game has died off simply because there wasn't product anymore. There are already people leaving due to this as leagues slowly decay, as there are less and less people there to play. It also doesn't look like Rise of the Floodborne is going to have much increase in product. Hopefully they can get the printing up to speed by this time next year, or things might get dicey. Fear number two, Ravensburger still keeps everything mostly quiet. Talk to me! Talk to me! While reveals are nice and announcements of reprints are great, there is still an incredibly low amount of communication between Ravensburger and the community. As of the writing of this script, we are a month out from this second set and we still don't have a comprehensive set of rules. There was word of an ambassador program, but that's been quiet for months, with no information on a possible start. Now, yesterday, Ravensburger did put out a full announcement, and that's awesome, that's exactly what I want. They are communicating with us when competitive is, when restocks are expected to come out. That is what we, as a community, want to hear. And until yesterday, or the 25th, 
we haven't been getting that. And so it's nice to see that my fears are already getting a little abated, but we'll see if this continues. Fear number three, Disney Lurkana becomes mostly competitive. No, we're just having fun. Fun? Fun? You think this is fun? Eric. I know there is a huge part of the community that is casual. However, more and more competitive content creators are arriving making gameplay videos on how to win and how to dominate the competition, and it concerns me that that part of the community is going to overshadow the casual and fun community. Now, I have no disdain for anyone who wants to play competitively, and I love these content creators. It's awesome seeing people create wonderful fan content. I'm just concerned that this is going to become like flesh and blood, where it's meant solely for competitive and not for the casual audience. And fear number four, that this one's more personal, is that I personally lose interest in Disney Lorcana. I have been making fewer videos lately, and part of it is because I don't get as much joy from it as I used to. Also, life enjoys keeping me from having the time to play online with friends, which is my primary method of playing Disney Lorcana. There are a few leagues in my area that I drop on in from time to time, but I have found myself not diving in as much as I thought I would. Now this could just be me trying to make a better life balance, but I really like this game and I don't want to step away from it. But what do you think? What are your greatest fears for Disney Lorcana this coming year? Let me know in the comments below and thank you for watching. Goodbye.